Can we celebrate the blood of Jesus this morning? Can we celebrate the blood of Jesus this morning? Well, we speak about it, but it's such a big thing. How the blood of Jesus, how it washes us clean, how it makes us whole, how it delivers us. So can we go ahead and give some praise for the blood of Jesus this morning? Do you have a praise in your heart for the blood of Jesus? The blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the blood. I'd like to come this morning from the book of Psalms. Psalms 95. 1 through 7. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout about the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it. In his hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. We are his people. We are his people. We belong to our God. Yes. He loves us more than we could ever understand. Yes. He loves us so much that he continues to deliver us, even though we don't deserve his love and his mercy. So one more time, can we give God a little bit of praise for his glory, for his mercy and his love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Shall we bow? for a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you on today, Father God. Lord, we give you praise on today, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day, Father God. For this is the day, God, that you have made, God. And so we rejoice, God, and we be glad in this day, God. God, we give no praise and glory to no man, Father God. But we give it all to you, Heavenly Father. So on this day, Father God, we enter into your gates with praise. And we enter into your courts with thanksgiving, Father God. God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your blood, Father God, that was shed on the cross at Calvary for us, God. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. For we know, God, it was not by your power. It was not by man's power, God. But it was by your spirit, saith the Lord, God. Have your way on today, God. God, we bind every foul spirit, God. We bind every agenda, God, that was from the enemy, God. And Lord, we say, God, have your way in this place, oh God.
forth, God. We send forth, God. For your word says, God, as it is done in heaven, it shall be on earth, God. So we send it forth, God. We send your blood, your blood, your blood, your blood. We send it forth, God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, have your way, have your way, God. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we love you. We adore you, God. We adore you, God. Bless the word on today, God. Let it not come from self, God. Let it not come from flesh, God. But let it come straight from the throne, God. Have your way, God. Let your word pierce our hearts, God. God, you know what's one by one, God. You know what's heart by heart, God. You know what's name by name, God. You know what we are in need of, God. Touch now, God, in the name of Jesus, God. And God, since you know what's like no other, God. God, you can, you can correct us, God. You can scorn us, God. You can rebuke us, God. But God, don't take your presence from us, God. Don't take your spirit from us, God. Let your spirit dwell with us, God. Let your spirit dwell in this place, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Let it not be according to what we desire, God. For we may not know, God. For you are the Alpha and the Omega, God. You are the beginning and the end, Father God. So we declare and decree, Father God, you shall have your way, God. It shall be the way you desire it to be, God. So we die to ourselves, God. And we say you have your way in this place on today, Father God. We move out the way, God. We don't wait on the praise team, God. We join in with the praise team, God. To set the atmosphere for your presence, God. For the manifestation of your glory, God. Have your way on this place. Have your way, God. Saturate the walls, God. Saturate the seats, God. Take over our minds, God. Take over our hearts, God. Take over our overcome with the love of you God let them come in God send us out God and let them not see us God but let them see your glory God let them see your glory God Lord we love you we honor you God we give you all the praise and glory on this day God for we love you God we take not for granted God that you let us see this day God so we are obligated to give you the praise. And that is what we will do, God. With our whole heart. With our whole spirit. With our whole mind, God. We give it all to you, God. We give it all to you, God. Don't leave us, God. Whatever you're doing, God. Count us not out, God. But include us, God. In the working of the kingdom, God. God, we bless your name. We give you the glory, God. Now as we usher ourselves, God, before you, God. Let it go up like a sweet aroma, God. Turn not your back, God. But encompass us, God, with your presence, God. Lord, we praise you and we thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Come on, let's call on the name of Jesus for a minute. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, I can't hear you in this place. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. My Savior, my Deliverer. Hallelujah. Jesus. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus. My Lord, my Savior. Hallelujah. What is he to you today? Jesus. Hallelujah, my friend. My way maker. Jesus. My provider. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. My lifter. Hallelujah. Jesus. The burden bearer. Jesus. Hallelujah. The restorer. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. My friend Jesus, hallelujah. hallelujah. My friend Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, my Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. 
Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. 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 Come on, just keep saying Jesus. 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 You hear us in there? Jesus. It's us, Jesus. Jesus. It's us, Jesus. Jesus. We're all in this together, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, it's us. Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Come on, let's blow with it. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, Jesus. I would draw men to me. Jesus. Jesus. Somebody's being drawn Jesus. right now in the name of Jesus. 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 Come on, come on, keep saying. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on and heal me, Jesus. Jesus. I need your healing, Jesus. Jesus. I need your healing right now, Jesus. Jesus. Come on and set me free, Jesus. Jesus. Come on and cut me free, Jesus. 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 My friend, my friend, Jesus. Jesus. My friend, Jesus. Jesus. My provider, Jesus. 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 Come on and call his name, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, I wonder who loves him today. Do you love him today? Come on, call his name. Come on and call his name. There's no other name than the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. 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 Jesus. Everybody shall confess, Jesus. my way maker, Jesus. my provider, Jesus. my provider. Come on again, Jesus. come on and feel it in your spirit. Jesus, 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 my Jesus. Jesus. I love you, Lord. Come on, anybody else today? Come on and call Jesus. His name. That's all we're going to do is call Jesus. Him. And He will come if you call Him. He will come if you call Him. I'm calling you, Jesus. Does anybody need Him? Jesus. My way maker. Jesus. My provider. Jesus. Jesus. Come on and keep calling Him. Jesus. 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 Heal me, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Set me free, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Heal me, Lord. Jesus. Heal my children, 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 Lord. Lord.
Can you breathe in this place? Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Come on, can we just lift our hands in worship? There will never be another moment like this. This moment will never be again. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Because there is none like you in all the earth, in all the earth. all over I searched all over Lord couldn't find nobody couldn't find nobody couldn't find nobody yes. oh yes Jesus oh I searched in the men I searched in the clubs Woo. hallelujah anybody been searching all around Hallelujah. Anybody remember what your past was? Yeah. Couldn't find nobody, couldn't find nobody, no. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. What you're experiencing is the authentic presence of the Lord. What you're experiencing is the authentic presence of the Lord. And what makes it authentic is when you do something you have never done before that is genuine unto the Lord so if the Lord tells you to walk just begin to walk if the Lord begins to put an unction in you to speak in other tongues just begin to speak in other tongues cause Lord you're holy you're holy you're holy oh Lord you're mighty you're mighty you're mighty you're mighty Tell the Lord, just come on in. Just stay with us a little while, Lord. Oh, just come on in like a mighty rushing wind. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody create the presence. Create an atmosphere for the presence to flow. Hallelujah. on me breathe on me Holy Ghost power breathe on me yesterday's gone it's today I'm in need Breathe on me. Come on, somebody just tell the Lord to breathe on you. Uh, yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Lord, I've been dry. I've been dry in my prayer life. I've been dry in my study. I've just been in this dry place, God. And I need your spirit to pour out on me today, Lord. Lord, I need you to pour out on me. Hallelujah. Anybody need the Lord to breathe? Anybody need the Lord to breathe on them? Hallelujah. Come and breathe on me. Come and breathe on me. Come and breathe on me. Hey, breathe on me. It's all right to be selfish sometimes. It's all right to ask God. Come on.
the concern you have and so it's a blessing to be able to call on the name of the Lord it's, it's a blessing to be able to know that he's there for you and everybody that knows the name of Jesus all you gotta do is just say Jesus Jesus for Personal, make it personal. Oh, hallelujah. Some hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise brings him close. Praise brings him in the room. Praise brings him. Praise gets his attention. When you will worship the Lord, when you want God to come, it's like an alarm in heaven. When he hears his children calling on him, when he hears them giving him praise, when he hears them in their pain, in their oh my God, hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody, open up your mouth and just say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yes, I love you. How I love you. Come on, come on. I really love you. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, say it to us. And tell it, come on. I really love you. Why, 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 why? Just for who you are. Hallelujah. In all of your glory. My heart sings. Holy, holy. Just stay right there. Holy, holy. Come on. Holy, holy, come on right now, right now, come on, come on, holy, holy, come on, come on, come on, holy, 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 you're holy, you're holy, 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 Just think about it for a few moments, just a few moments. Just think about why you love him. Somebody can recall a day when you were in trouble. Somebody can think about when you went through a storm. Somebody can remember when you maybe was in the hospital. Somebody Jesus. was going through with their family member. Somebody had Jesus. financial problems. Somebody went through with a marriage. And somebody had difficulty on the job. And, there may be somebody here that was even suicidal and you didn't even want to live anymore. You just
just gave up. But, but the Lord, but the Lord, but the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Just, just, just grab somebody's hand. Don't, don't squeeze it, but just, just grab a hold of it if you can. Dear God, we thank you for this service. And God, we pray now that you would touch a neighbor today that needs a touch from you, Lord. Somebody come in today and they've been beat up all week by the enemy, by the lion spirit, God. Encourage them right now. Use them as a conduit, God. Just flow into them, flow out of them and touch them, Lord. We pray a special prayer for the Hawkins family. We, we pray, God, you continue to comfort them. We, we pray, God, for Sister Danae and her family, her mom, Sister Deanie, all of the Butler family, all the Lockett family, Lord. All the family, Lord, that are in the hour of bereavement and just what they've been through, Lord. Even those that are in the midst of some troubles right now. We pray a special prayer, Elder Rose, that you touch him this morning and regulate his blood pressure, God. And we just speak life. We just speak health to Elder Rose. Give Sister Brenda strength, Lord. We lift up Mother Porter this morning, God. We know she's in your hands right now, God. We know you you still in charge, God. And you're able to raise her up again, God. You're able to bring her out of the hospital. We just trust you with Mother Porter this morning and be with Adrian and all of the Porter family, everybody connected to Mother Porter's life. Let them lean on you, God. Let them trust you, God. We lift up our friend this morning and Brother Spanky, Lord, we know his heart is heavy by this family members down in Mississippi going through, Lord. And we just pray for you to heal Dennis, God. And we just pray, God, that you just work on every other situation that is a concern, God. And we just thank you for it. And lift up Mother Jimson. Give her strength today. And thank you for Sister Dana. Bless her today. And encourage her, Mother Philpott, God. We lift up all our dear mothers. We lift up, Lord, Deacon Hall today, God. Right now, be with Deacon Hall. And we thank you for him. And we give you praise, God, for everyone on our prayer list. The names we don't know to call. We lift them up all around this globe today, all around the world. Wherever there's trouble at, Lord, we pray for peace today. We pray for men and women everywhere that's in the midst of a storm, God. All the families in Danville, we pray even for the young man that was shot. Lord, you bring him out of the hospital, Lord. And God, we know you can do it, God. And the young lady that had the babies, we pray for her, God. And you raise her up, God. We just know there's so much going on. But we know you're able. And we thank you for it. We praise you for it, every blessing. For our president, for our congress, for our governors and our mayors and everybody. In authority, pastors and ministers everywhere, God. We pray for them. This entire congregation, everyone in this room is important to you, God. Let everyone feel your love this morning. Let everyone know you love them, that you died and you rose on the third day. And we thank you for it. And we praise you. Come on, lift your hands one more time above your head. Just tell God, I love you today, God. I love you today. In spite of everything, I still love you, Lord. In spite of everything that's happened, I still love you, Lord. In spite of everything, God, that's went on and that's even going on, what's challenging me right now? I still love you, and I give you praise for it, and I give you glory, and I give you honor. Come on, shake somebody's hand or hug somebody. Let them feel the love of God flowing through you today. No judging, no condemning, no talking about nobody. Just let everybody feel the love of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hallelujah.
morning. Good morning. Yeah, y'all act like it's not a good morning. Good morning. Hey. A uh, couple announcements. One is, are you playing so I can sing, Chris? Is that what it is? Okay. Uh, uh, the first announcement is the youth department will be having a meeting tomorrow at 6 30 in the office it's back there by the conference room anybody that is associated with the youth department uh sunday school teachers everybody that is uh, in that leadership committee please meet tomorrow at 6 30. uh destiny's anointed will have practice tomorrow at no i'm sorry destiny's anointed will have practice 6 30 from 6 p.m to 7 p.m also is praise in the house today is praise here Come here, praise. Uh, just real quick. Uh, praise, if I said to you, if I said excellent, what would you say? If I said excellent, you'd say? E-X-C-E-L-L-E-N-T. Excellent. Excellent. All right, come on. All right. Let's, uh, let's say expenditure. Expenditure went too high. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. But Kelly, I may not get this right till you help me, but this young lady won the state spelling bee. The state spelling bee. Hey. And am I correct that her school has not had not has not even had anybody qualify for 14 years. Okay, and she is. So her and another girl placed first. Yes. So we just want to congratulate her. Uh, and also, uh, she's the first African American. Am I correct? Woo! Most definitely. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So we just want to congratulate her because we know for sure that she could be president someday. She may not be, but she could be our next Michelle. All right. All right. Um, I have one more. I guess I have to read. I'm going to try to read this real quick. Uh, this is from a young lady named Sarah Beasley. Forgive me because I have, a not, I have not pre read this, so I hope I read it correctly. My name is Sarah Beasley. I am a registered nurse and have been practicing in this profession for over seven years now. I'm excited to share that just recently I have been given an amazing opportunity to go on a medical mission trip to. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> I cannot pronounce it. <laughs> Located in South America. That's good enough. That's what I should have said. Uh, anyway, there are a group of nurses, many from Danville area, going for eight days to provide medical and dental care to jungle communities along the Napa uh, River. Uh, I'm going to skip a little bit and say that uh, they are asking for support from friends, family, churches, and local communities and businesses. If you cannot help, we please we ask for your prayers. All support is welcome and greatly appreciated. Please remit donation by May the 23rd, 2014. Uh, for more information, there is a website. I will put this on the board. I hope I didn't skip over too much, Tabitha. But anyway, so there's a young lady that she would like to uh, get our help. And that's all the announcements I have. I know some of you know Sarah. She's a member here. I don't know if Sarah. She had to work today. Okay, but we thank God for Sarah and uh, for her mission team that's going to go and provide services for people that are going to definitely appreciate that. Amen? Anybody here today for the first time, first time visitor, please stand. If you're a first time, we're not going to do anything to you. We just want to recognize you and honor you today. Is anybody? All right, come on. Let's thank the Lord for this young lady. Thank the Lord for this brother right here, this brother right here. God bless y'all today. Y'all are welcome here at New Life Church of Faith. This brother right here. Come on, let's thank the Lord for this brother right here. God bless you. You're welcome today. We got a 
little package that they'll make sure they get to you before you leave today. And again, you're welcome anytime here at New Life uh, Church of Faith. Amen. So we again thank God for being here. Thank God for taking uh, Sister Miller and myself on our week of vacation and bringing us back safely. And uh, 40 years, God blessed us to be married. Amen. So we are thanking God that uh, he did allow that to happen. And we are here today in celebration with all of you. Amen. So we are praising God. and We're thanking him for his goodness and for his mercy. So we honor all of you today in your prospective places. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord today. Tell your neighbor there is a word from the Lord today. Amen. Somebody say you're in the right place. You're in the right place at the right time. There's a word from the Lord today. Amen. Amen. It's, it's going to bless you today. Amen. It's going to help you today. Amen. Amen. It's even going to deliver some folks on today. Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord for Sister Thelma. Sister Thelma, y'all didn't know a lot of y'all. She's been sick in her body. And come on, let's give God praise for Sister Thelma being here today. Amen. God is good. God is good. We thank God today for Sister Thelma. Amen. And so we want to minister to you today from the subject matter. Jesus has never rejected you. Amen. Y'all ain't got it. It's got two amens. But I don't know if Deke put it. Oh, yeah, he put it up there. Jesus has never rejected you. Shout glory. Uh-huh. See, I'm, I'm, see, if you really get it, you won't even need me to coach you. You really won't even need me to tell you. If you get it, Jesus has never rejected you. Hallelujah. 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 Shout glory. Okay, I don't know. I don't think I'm wrong. I don't think the Holy Ghost is wrong, but y'all act like y'all never been rejected before. Has anybody ever been rejected before? Huh? Anybody ever uh, rejected you before? Uh-huh. And so Jesus has never rejected you. So it don't matter who has ever rejected you Jesus has never rejected you. Hallelujah. Revelation. Revelation. Get the revelation of what it means that when Jesus doesn't reject you, it doesn't matter who else has rejected you. It don't matter who else has said, you're not good enough, you're not this, you're not that. The truth, the revelation is that Jesus has never rejected you. Amen? There's a lot of folks who don't even know why they act the way they act. A lot of folks don't even understand why they act the way that they act. And it's connected to a spirit of rejection. Mm-hmm. Because when you have been uh, 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 rejected, you now have a tendency to reject everything that God's trying to get to you. You'll find yourself a lot of days not really wanting to hold on to the blessings that God has given you. And you will even possibly figure out a way to sabotage your own life because you carry a spirit of rejection. And the spirit of rejection always tells you that you're not good enough. And that you don't deserve it. Even when the Lord brings it to you, you can try to figure out a way to destroy your own blessings. And so there are many folks, many folks that are suffering in our world today from a spirit of rejection. They're dealing with a feeling of uh, insecurity, a feeling that nobody cares about me. Nobody really loves me. And it all comes from a place of rejection. But the word today, the message today is that Jesus has never rejected you. Shout glory. Amen. I don't know, you know, uh, I, I preached this at 8 o'clock and it seemed like, you know, 8 o'clock we were jumping. Uh, we're going to jump? We're we, we going we gonna to jump? 
We, we, do you understand what God has done for you by not rejecting you? It don't matter what nobody else says. God has never rejected you. Jesus has never rejected you. But most of us are focusing on the people that have rejected us. Most of us are struggling because of human rejection. And because of that, we forget about it. It don't matter how many other folks have rejected you. As long as Jesus hasn't rejected you, then you are a winner. Amen. You are a winner right now because we have the proof of the resurrection that Jesus has not rejected you. And it don't matter what nobody says. Jesus has never rejected you. Amen. I want to say this because some of you uh, don't even understand why you act the way you act. Amen. You're in the room. You don't even understand why you act the way you act. Because some of it came about and you didn't have nothing to do with it. Mm hmm Yeah. It, it, it came about and even possibly while you were in your mother's womb. The spirit of rejection. Mm-hmm. See, because if your mother or your father had a conflict while you were in the birth process, even that there opened up a door for you to begin to feel rejected. A lot of folks don't even know why it is that they haven't been able to really feel love and they haven't really ever been able to enjoy love is because of the experience that they had even while they were in their mother's room. See, because if somebody had a conflict in the process of you being born and there was a spirit of rejection on them, it transferred even to you. And there are generational curses. We heard of generational curses. And, and a lot of times we just associate generational curses with other things. But in reality, there are folks that are dealing with even being born into this world and not even know why they feel rejected. Some folks are in the family where they felt rejected and don't, know, don't understand why they are being rejected. Why they got folks in their, their family that don't like them and they don't understand it, but it's a spirit of rejection. And it causes you not to really uh, move forward and, and be successful in your life because you're dealing with that spirit, that presence of rejection. Now, see, a lot of us can look into our own uh, family members or even we know of folks that are belonging to certain families and just looking at their physical, we can say that's a Miller or that's an Odom or that's a Wade because the DNA is in their physical body. Tell your neighbor your DNA is deeper than just the physical part because in your, in your, in your spiritual DNA, you are born with traits of things in you that come from other folks and you didn't have nothing to do with it. But these folks that were before you had something to do with how you act like you act because you know you heard it before how somebody said you act just like your daddy. You act just like your mama. And you may not even know that there was a line of folks in your life that had a spirit of rejection on them. They had a spirit of rejection and you born in the world and you always feel rejected. You always feel unloved. You always feel like nobody cares about you. But the truth, Jesus has never rejected you. Come on, shout glory. See, the, the victory and the shout and the dance today is no matter who has rejected you, Jesus hasn't rejected you. So that puts you in line for the blessing. Hallelujah. That puts you in line for the blessing. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor you're in line for the blessing. Tell your neighbor right now, God has already blessed you. And it don't matter who has rejected you. A lot of folks are all, oh my God, they can't get out of their past. They can't enjoy their present or their future because they keep living in a past rejected relationship. Amen. Some woman will get a good man, but she'll dog him because of the spirit of rejection is on her. And no matter how he treats her, no matter how he takes care of her, she carries the spirit of rejection and she keeps pushing him away. 
She's a good woman. She loves him. But because he's dealing with a spirit of rejection, he sabotages that relationship because he can't receive love because of spirit of rejection. Come on here. Come on here. Listen to this. Listen to this. Do you know when you have a spirit of rejection, it opens you up to drugs? Some folks don't even know why they like to get high. They don't even know why they like to drink. They don't even know why they like to just sleep around and, and carry on foolishness all the time. It's because they're dealing with a spirit of rejection. And they can talk to the crack pipe. And the crack pipe won't reject me. He always make me feel good. Come on here. Oh, the old whiskey bottle, it don't reject me. It, it always makes me feel good. Why do some women and some men stay in an abusive relationship? Why do they take abuse from somebody and they are not, uh, you know, doing anything for them but dogging them out? Because when you have a spirit of rejection, you hold on to any form of love you can get. You, it ain't love, but it's, it's anything is better than being by myself. It's better than being alone. And so I'll allow him or her to abuse me because I'm carrying a spirit of rejection on me. A, a, a feeling like, uh, you know, I don't know if I can make it without, you know, his love or her love. But somebody said, but Jesus has never rejected you. Come on, shout glory. Shout hallelujah. Uh-huh. I'm going to have a good time with y'all or without y'all. I'm going to just go ahead and, and preach myself happy again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say it don't matter what the day might be. It don't matter what the hour might be. I know the truth this morning that Jesus has never kicked me to the curb. Jesus has never turned his back on me. Jesus has never waited for me to be a good person before he would love me. In my trouble, in my hard times, in my difficulties, the Lord is always there. He's always there. He's always there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Y'all sit down. Sit down. If y'all can get down. Sit down. Sit down. Listen to this. This is why I know Jesus loved me. He saved me as a sinner. Uh-oh, y'all didn't catch it. Y'all didn't even get it. He didn't wait for us to get to church. He didn't start accepting us after we got into church and, and we stopped drinking or smoking or shacking or doping, whatever we were doing. See, the Lord has never rejected us. He's never rejected us. Even, even while we were in Rome, he was always there for us. See, now see, so many of us are looking for human validation, but the truth of the matter, humans are always going to reject you. Amen. Humans are in their natural ability incapable of loving you. Because humans are always looking for somebody that they can uh, prove their life before they'll love them. Amen. They're always testing you to see if you really who you say you are. But God already know you're a crook. Uh-oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing to that. God already know you're a liar. God already know you you living with somebody or you drinking or you drugging. He already know it. And he never has rejected you. He never has said, no, I'm waiting for you to get it together. He always has been there for all of us. Amen. Nobody called on the name of the Lord and he said no. Amen. Nobody has asked God to help them and God said, I'm not helping you. Amen. Most of us have not called on the Lord and that's why we didn't get any help. Because we waited for somebody else to tell us that we were okay, but God already said, in your mess, in your trouble, I love you. Amen? In your foolishness, I love you. This is how it works. Everybody in this family, everybody in this church got family. And uh, we can talk about our family, but you better not. Don't ever think we that close that you can talk about my family. Just because I'm your pastor and then you come up and say something about Beverly Everett, Aisha Latoya, don't even try it. Amen. 
But the Lord, the Lord, hallelujah, don't matter what nobody say. Come on here. The Lord never waits for us to have approval, but humans are always waiting for us to say the right thing before they embrace us. And you can cross the line with humans real easy. It don't take much. I'm always praying as a pastor that folks will stay in love in this church. Because it don't take much to get folks to fall out of love in church. It don't take much. It don't have to be nothing big. Just be a little something, something, something. And it'll go Zingo and Lulu all through here. Amen. And that's why I'm telling you, God never has rejected you. You can't even get into certain places because of the skin that you're in. Can I get a witness? People of color in America are the most rejected people that live in this country. Check all the statistics. Everywhere you see it, we the worst. Not true, but that's how they write it. Every time you go out your door, you know you could easily be arrested for no more than the skin that you're in. Amen. Everywhere you go, you are afraid of being rejected. Amen. I hope they hire me. I hope I can get the car. I hope I can get the house. I hope this. I hope that. Why? Because there's a spirit of rejection that's all over this land. Amen. It ain't just for black folks. It's for white folks and Hispanic folks, too. But I can talk about black folks because I'm black. And I know what it is to live in this black skin and to be hated without a cause. Amen. But see what helped me not to allow folks to intimidate me anymore. I met Jesus. Anybody ever met Jesus? I said, has anybody ever met Jesus? Hallelujah. Somebody, and Jesus said, come on. I said, and Jesus said, you're welcome. And Jesus said, it don't matter what you're doing. Hallelujah. And it don't matter where you're being. Hallelujah. And it don't matter what other folks say. Amen. Some of y'all can't enjoy your life because y'all afraid that it will cause you to be rejected. Tell the truth. You got to be real careful when you get a blessing because a lot of folks don't like it when you get a blessing. Because you can get rejected just because you go to school and get you a degree, young people. You, you, can, be the, you can be rejected because you get a husband or wife and somebody else don't have them. You, you, you can be rejected because you got a new hairdo. Amen. Sister talked to you last week. You got your hair done different this week, and this week she didn't see you. A hairdo can get you rejected in this human world, huh? Amen. You can just do a Do you understand that we are dealing with a spirit of rejection every day? And if you don't keep the revelation in your mind that Jesus has rejected me, come on here. Tell your neighbor, shake your weave. If you got one, that's your weave. If no matter, don't nobody else like it, tell them Jesus ain't rejected me. Come on here. When you get in your new suit, your new dress, your new car, your new house, just go right on down the road and say, but Jesus has rejected me, and it don't matter if you don't like me. It don't matter if you don't speak to me. It don't matter if you don't shake my hand. It don't matter if you don't recognize me. Jesus has never rejected me. Shout glory! I am not going to live beneath my privilege because that upsets you. I am not going to stop going to the next level spiritually because you don't want to go. Oh, yeah, right in the church. I got some Bible coming up here. But there's a lot of folks in the church are get upset when you become a prayer warrior. A lot of folks in the church are get upset when you show up at church more regular than they do. <laughs> let, me, let me get me some Bible. Okay, we got we to gotta go. Let me see if I find me some, some glasses here. Okay. St. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall what? Shall not perish, but shall have what? Look at 17. For God sent not his son into the world to do what? Condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Tell your neighbor, Jesus has never condemned you. 
I said he never came to condemn you. He came to save you. How many know Jesus already knew you would tow up from the flow up? And that's why he came. He already knew you was a liar, a backbiter, a whoremonger, a thief, a jailbird. He already knew you was a shocker and all the other stuff. And he never came to point his finger at you and say, you are a sinner. You are a wicked person. You ain't no good. He never came to put you down, but he came to lift you up. He came to lift you up. He came to lift you up. Hallelujah. He came to get you out of trouble. He knew you were in trouble. He knew I was in trouble. He didn't come to condemn us. Tell your neighbor. Quit condemning folks. Are you in there with yourself, right yourself? Got your own foot on a banana peel, about to slip into hell, but yet you got your nerve to talk about somebody else. If the Lord was to ever uncover what you doing, if he ever revealed your little nasty mind, come on here. Jesus never came to condemn us. Somebody say, he ain't never rejected me. He know all my business. Tell your neighbor, he the God of the second chance. How many know he just keep on coming after you? I mean, there's a lot of days we be crying, God, I ain't worthy, God. And God said, I don't care. I know you ain't worthy, but I love you. I never stop loving you. I never stop loving you. I never stop caring for you. I never stop doing for you. Get up, 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 get up. I hear the Holy Ghost saying, get up, get up, get up, get up, hey, get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Hey, tell your neighbor, the God told me to tell you to get up, get up. Get up! Get up again! Walk again! Shout again! Dance again! Leap again! Believe again! Try again! Somebody say he ain't never rejected you. Jesus has never rejected you. Sit down. Sit down. It's feel like 8 o'clock now, Minister Shannon. Dr. Hope is feeling like 8 o'clock about now. I think they're about to get the revelation uh, that Jesus is on their side. Uh, and it don't matter uh, who's against you. If God be for you, uh, he's more than the whole world against you. Uh, if God... Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Tell your neighbor, get up! Get up! Get up! Okay, okay, okay. Hold your mule. Hold my mule. Hallelujah. Somebody say, He ain't never condemned me. Somebody say, God ain't never, for God has never condemned me. He know I won't come like he tell me to come. He know I won't sing when he tell me to sing. He know I won't give when he tell me to give. He know I won't pray when he tell me to pray. But he ain't never condemned me. He ain't never told me, get away from me. He ain't never turned his back on me. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. Come on, let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Anybody here need a saving? I didn't need nobody else to tell me what was wrong with me. I already knew what was wrong with me. I needed somebody to tell me how to get out of the mess I was in. I've done everything I'm big enough to do, but I needed somebody to tell me how to straighten out the crazy life I was living. And that's why Jesus came. Tell your neighbor, Jesus said, come on. I got you. Come on. I know what you're going through. He said, I've been touched by your infirmities. Come on here. 
I know I've been tempted too. I know what it is to be tempted. I know what it is to be rejected. I know what it is to be talked about like a dog. I know what it is to be put down and criticized. Somebody says, but Jesus has never rejected me. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Look at this. Look at the clear. Look at look, look at the clarifier. If I believe on Jesus, nobody can condemn me. But he, look at this. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Whew. Your problem is not that Jesus don't love you. Your problem is you don't love Jesus. Now I want to make sure I finish preaching. We still shouting. See, the problem ain't with Jesus. The problem with us. Because we didn't believe that everybody done told us that we are not lovable. And Jesus said, I know you're not lovable, but come on, believe in me, and I'll make you lovable. I know you're a thief, but I'll make an honest person out of you. I know you're a homemonger, but you come with me. I'll make you sanctify that body that you live in. I know you like to get high, but if you come with me, I'll take that dope out of your desire, and I'll put praises on your lips. I'll put joy in your heart. I'll take depression away from you. I know you suicidal, but if you believe in me, I'll make you the head and not the tail. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Come on, Deke. And this is the condemnation. The light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Come on, y'all. We all had our Dracula days. We love the darkness. Can I, can I get a witness in this place? Come on here. Come on here. Tell the truth. The darker the party, the better the party. What's the, what's the word on the street? Don't nothing happen about 10 p.m. <laughs> we start getting ready about 10 o'clock. Your mom and daddy and everybody else in the church telling you go home by 11.30. You, 11.30 is when you step it out. You can't see nothing. Are you so happy? Because men love darkness rather than light. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither come to the light. Least his deeds should be reproved. People don't like to hear the truth because it exposes the devil. Come on here. It exposes things in us that is not of God. Come on here. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wroth in God. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea and there he tarried with them and baptized. I don't know why I threw that one in there, but it's in there. Anyway, come on, let's go a little further. Come on, look at this. Some more good stuff. Tell your neighbor, stop believing the lie. Come on, look at Isaiah 65. 65, Isaiah. I am salt of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. God said, I'm searching for folks that ain't even searching for me. I'm trying to get somebody to come to me that don't have any rights to me. Look what he said. And I have spread out my hands all the day unto a what? A rebellious people which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. Walk in their own ways. God said, I'm spreading out myself. I'm trying to get you to come all the time. I'm not rejecting you. I'm not turning my back on you. I'm telling you to come. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Have we been given? Ha okay. When have we given God our best? And God has rejected it. Question. When have you gave God your best and God say, nope, I won't take it? See, the truth, we're not giving God our best. We're giving God the leftovers. And then we're mad because he rejects the leftovers that we want to give him. Uh -huh, yeah, we can get up at 5, 4, 3, uh, 7 in the morning and go to work, but 11 o'clock is too early. 
Uh oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh uh, uh uh. That's why I love the eight o'clock service in Champagne because it's more of a sacrifice to be at church at eight o'clock. But a lot of folks will tell God arrogantly, I am not going to that church because they hold service too early. But I want a miracle today, but I won't show up early to get it. I don't want nothing to happen to my children. I don't want nothing to happen to my companion. But I will not get up early and give God the best worship that I can give him. But I'll give God 1130, 12 o'clock worship and then have an attitude if pastor priest past 1 o'clock. Work 50 hours, 60 hours, 70 hours a week. But I dare not do overtime for praising God. When? Have you gave God your best and he's rejected it? That's the issue this morning. It's never God has rejected us, but God's rejecting that lukewarm praise. The lukewarm. Y'all don't even know how happy I was Easter. This place was swole. This place was swole. I loved it. They were looking for a seat. Cause see, they think they can just walk in here any time and I can get a seat. When are we going to get past being Christmas and Easter church folks? All them thousands of folks that are out there this morning in nobody's church don't have a desire to give God their best. But everybody want God to save their family, put food on their table, put clothes on their back, make a way out of no way. But here they come with a lukewarm offering. I got some Bible. Come on, let's go to Genesis. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and what? An offering unto the Lord. Tell your neighbor, God always from the beginning expects you to bring him an offering. God always expects you to bring him something that you have that's yours and give it to him. Amen. He always expects us to present something to him. You don't give God something because he needs something. You give God something because he's already blessed you before you ever. <sighs> Look at this. And Abel, he also brought up the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. In other words, God received what Abel brought him. Look at Cain. But unto Cain, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect, and Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Hmm. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thy wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? Look at this, look at this, y'all. If thy doeth well, shall thy not be accepted? And if thy doeth not well, sin lieth. At the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and I shall rule over him. Y'all check it out now. Who was born first? Cain. Cain was born first. But Abel gave God the better offering, and so here it was that Abel ruled over Cain. You got the first birthright, but if you don't do your job, them folks come behind you, going to get your blessing because you refuse to give God your best, but then you turn around and try to say God ain't fair. Folks come in this church after you've been in 20 years and you refuse to serve, and then you look and see they up front and they got the paid position and you mad. Uh-oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Mm -mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because you want to come, Johnny, come lately. You, you want to come and just say, here, here, God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See, what's wrong is well, God's not rejecting us. We're rejecting God. 
See, when God tells us, I want you to bring me your best, you say, God, here's my leftovers. You know, I didn't work all day and I'm tired, so at the end of the day, I'll give you a two-minute prayer in between yawns. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You know, after I pay all my bills that I made, after I pay all my bills I made, here is my leftover. I ain't got nothing but a dot. And some of y'all are so, so wicked in this church, you won't tithe and you won't give an offering either. But you suck up God's blessing every day. You, 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 you made every bill you got. You, you, you the one that went out and spent your money the way you spent it. But then you say, God, aren't you happy with this? And then you say, God, I don't know why. I can't never get ahead. God said, you'll never get ahead making me last. You'll never get ahead. Well, here's your leftover. Here, 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 God. Aren't you happy with this? I ain't going to never stay consistent in the choir. I'm going to just sing when it's time to shine. Uh-huh. I don't come back on Sunday nights until time for me to preach. Mm, yeah. I dare not come to 6 o'clock prayer meeting and Bible study? You mean that's from 6 o'clock to about 9? Oh, I dare not do a three-hour for God. But I'm really giving God 11 o'clock and then maybe 11.45 before I get here. Y'all ain't saying nothing now. It's quiet. It's quiet. Because we, we, we want God to give us the very best. But we got all kind of reasons why we mad at somebody else's blessing. Come on, let's look at old Cain here. Look at old Cain. Look at Cain. Look at Cain. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they saw, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and he slew him. Look what happens when you get mad at God blessing somebody else's obedience and your disobedience makes you a murderer. Killed his own brother. Not that God was respect of person. He was respect of offering. Cain didn't bring the best stuff that he had grew. He brought the old withered stuff he had left over. Here, here's some old dried up cabbage. Here, some old dried up tomatoes. Here. And Abel said, this is my first one. This, this is the best little one I got in my little crop of sheep. Come here. I want to bring the best one and bring it to God. See, when you give your best to God, some tell your neighbor, you're going to create some haters. Just get ready. When, when you decide to be sold all the way out, when you say you ain't going to sleep with nobody, you gonna, yes, you're going to limit your, your, your possibility of men. Uh-huh. You're going to limit your possibility of women when, when you say, I got to have a ring on it. Come on here. Uh-huh. When, when you say, I, I refuse to give God the leftovers after I get out here and drink and drug and act a fool, and then when I'm all broke up and all diseased up, then here I come. God, hear me. God, hear me. Mm -hmm. So all of these teenagers in here, all you teenagers that ain't started having sex, don't have it till you get a ring on it. Every one of you in here that ain't already bedding down with some little boy or some little girl, give God your best. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And if you already have started fornicating, you can stop today. You can be born again and become a born again virgin again. And you can again rededicate yourself to saying, for God I live and for God I die. But when you make that declaration, get ready to be hated. Get ready for your friends. To yuck, yuck, yuck. You ain't had sex yet. Yuck, yuck, yuck. You don't smoke weed. Yuck, yuck, yuck. You don't drink nothing. You a church boy. You a church girl. And here you are on your way to being Dr. So-and-so, Professor So-and-so, 
You're on your way to having a drop-top BMW. And I want to say this like I can see faith. I can see faith. And I can see, I can see praise. I can, I can see them with their drop-tops. I can see hope. I can see others in this church. And they can have the drop-top bins with their satchel. That means their briefcase on their side. Come on here. And they're rolling down one of those avenues of some of the major cities in this country. Come on here. And then I can see them opening up their satchel, their briefcase. And they say, Mommy and Daddy, where do you want to go? out in the world. I got plenty money. I don't have no unmet needs because I gave God my best. I didn't wait to go out in the streets and have my time in sin. But I started off as a young woman, as a young man. Tell your neighbor, you ain't going to be popular in high school. Did they have prom last night? It ain't This Saturday? Come on, let's pray. In the name of Jesus. We pray they keep their draws up when they go to the pro. See, because cause the tradition is you're supposed to lose your virginity on prom night. Uh-huh. Y'all ain't going to say nothing like that in church, but I will. Uh-huh. It's pressure on prom night for the little girls to lose her virginity on prom night. Mm-hmm. So if you parents don't talk to your children before prom night, don't be surprised what will happen after prom. <laughs> And if they do go ahead and violate it, you can at least say the blood ain't on my hands. Now get on in there and push. I can't push for you. You didn't made your bed, now sleep in it. Get on in there, and when that pain hits you, I'm not going to even be praying. I'm going to be real quiet during that time. I'm going to say, get up, Lord, get up. Get up. Let it be a 72-hour labor, God. Get up. Get up, Lord. Okay, 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 okay. 68 hour labor. That's still too much labor. Okay, all right. 87 hours. No. Okay, I'm going to tell y'all this. I'm going to tell y'all this. Any one of y'all parents in here, your children have already stepped over that line. If you help them, they'll do it again. What do I mean? When they get that baby, you never babysit on Friday and Saturday night. Oh, you never babysit Friday and Saturday nights. No, 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 no. I do not. I'm, I'm getting ready to go to church. Hey, I got to get myself consecrated. And I can't have Julian run around. <laughs> Listen. Grandson, get up. Take your pampers and get out of here. Dia, dia, nothing. Get your little. Come on, come on, somebody. So you got to use some wisdom. I told some parents that had a son that got a baby out of wedlock. I said, if you don't make him feel this pain, he'll get another one. Every man, I mean, every son, every parent that has a son, and you don't make him own his responsibility, he'll get another baby. If he get a girl pregnant, starting that week, he got to go to work. Because that baby got to have some pampers. That baby got to have some milk and pay for some doctor visits, everything. No, you, you, don't, you don't love her. You don't even know her. Go to work. That's yours. That's yours right there. This preacher right here is in high school, his senior year, and I worked 40 hours a week to take care of Everett. While I was in high school, I worked at uh, Holiday Inn busing tables from 3 to 11. I got out of school at 2.30. I went to Holiday Inn from 3 o'clock to 11 o'clock, Monday through Friday. I worked a 40-hour week. My mother-in-law ain't had to buy one pamper because ever couldn't even wear pampers because his skin was too sensitive, and I had to pay for a diaper service. And I made sure that my mother-in-law never had the satisfaction to say she bought ever the pamper. Boom! Milk! Everything. So don't tell me if anybody in here got a child 18, 17, 20 years old, and he, 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 nothing. He made it now. And take care of it. Make him take care of it. He can't get a job. Give him five dollars, and let him go buy a carton of, of, of water up at County Market, and it's getting ready to be eighty on Wednesday. Set him out there on that corner with that water, not drugs. I got water, dollar bottle. You got a whole 24 for $5. You didn't made yourself triple your income. Now go buy another case and start buying some Pampers. How many know? How many know we'll do it right now in this room? Listen to what I'm getting ready to say. If you see a young man standing out on the corner selling water and say, I have a son to support, how many know we'll buy that water? How many know we'll buy that water? 
What you doing, boy? Give me two bottles. Huh? How many of you know it's better for him to buy, sell some water, than to sell some drugs and go to prison and leave that child forever? My heart was so happy, uh, Elder Odoms. I seen the pictures yesterday of every playing basketball with little Israel. I was looking at. I said, I like that. I liked it. Everett ain't no baller. He's all music and all that other stuff. But he was saying Israel was doing it to him, but he was out there with him. He said, I ain't never been no baller. But how many know Israel gonna remember that the rest of his life? My daddy played basketball with me. A kid don't care nothing about you buying him no Jordans. He wants you to pick him up and hug him and go out on the playground and throw some balls with him. You gonna walk up with your drug money. The next thing he know, he looking in a casket. And my daddy, yes, that's your daddy. Y'all get me all my message. Well, we are Romans 10 and 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. How many know? Look at this. Come on, read. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For with the, for the scripture saith, whosoever, what? Believeth in him, what? Shall not be ashamed. Come on here. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, and for the same Lord over all rich and to all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever. Whosoever. He ain't rejected nobody in this room this morning if you call on him. Every drug dealer, every prostitute, every lesbian, every homosexual, every fornicator, everyone. Whoever call on him, he'll save you. Whoever say Jesus don't love you, tell Jesus the truth. I don't love Jesus. <sighs> Come on, let's get this last one. Everybody stand on your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Come unto me, all ye that what? And are heavy laden. Come on here. And I will give you rest. Come on here. Come unto me. All ye that labor and that are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And you, So tell your neighbor God ain't a bully. God ain't trying to gangster you and dog you. God say I'm meek and lowly. Let me holler at you. Let me talk to you. Though your sins may be red as crimson. They shall be as white as snow. No matter what you've done, come on here. For I am meek and lowly in heart, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Don't tell, the, don't tell God he's too hard of a taskmaster. He said, my yoke is easy. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to do some things, but I ain't going to never ask you to do something that you cannot do. I'm never going to require of you to do something that is beyond your reach. Come on here. Tell my, somebody say it today and mean it. Jesus has never rejected me. Shout glory. I told the inmates at the prison Tuesday night, God is the God of the second chance. Some of y'all don't even know. Some of y'all came to me in Sister Miller's renewal and I had about five guys around me. You didn't know who they were. Why? Because they had no stench of ever being in prison. But they sit in my Bible study at Danville Prison 15 and 18 and 20 years. But when they got out of prison, God set them on high. They blessed me. One of them was one of my escorts in the wedding. You would have never known it. Because he was so dapper. He was so clean. He was just, he was high stepping. See, this is what I love about Jesus. He's able to take us from the lowest place. He don't care where you start at. He don't care what you what you got on your rap sheet. He don't care. If you had an abortion, he don't care. If you rejected your baby, he don't care. That's why I love him. 
Because nobody in this room is a throwaway. Nobody in this room is a misfit. Nobody in this room is a black sheep. Nobody. He said, the day that you hear my voice, woo, harden not your heart. Uh, come to him today. Come to him. Make up in your mind you're going to quit rebelling against God. Where are you going to start rebelling against the devil and tell the devil, no more, no more. Last couple days I've been telling the devil, don't even talk in my presence. Tell your neighbor, shut down the whispering spirit. In the deliverance ministry on Thursday, prophetess did a demonstration. And she went and put on a red outfit and a black face. And she had a young lady to sit on a chair. And the young lady had a water gun in her hand. And the young lady was saying, I messed up. I ain't no good. And the demon behind it was saying, that's right. That's right, you ain't no good. You've been too far. You've done too much. And the devil, when you think a lot of times that the thoughts you are arriving at are yours, they're not even yours. And the Lord's telling me to tell y'all today, shut him down from even talking to you. Come on. How many of y'all got a phone that y'all turn off when you don't want to talk to people? Will you shut them down? How many of you look at the, the call ID and say, oh, she crazy. I ain't talking to her today. I don't care if she can ring my number 10 times. I ain't picking it up. My little wife picked her phone up, put it on the other side of the room. She said, I'm tired of it in the middle of the night, buzzing me and talking to me and trying to get my attention. You, you, put him over there. Do you know a lot of us are letting the devil talk to us? He's the one that's told you that it's better for you not to work than to work. It's better for you to rebel against your parents. It's better for you to cheat on your wife or your husband. It's better for you. It's better for you. But it's time to shut him down. Somebody said, I don't give you permission to even talk to me. Somebody said, no unclean spirits. I don't give you any authority to come into my airspace in the name of Jesus. I mean, no, if we can shut them down in the natural, we can shut them down in the spiritual. We're in spiritual warfare. You got to do warfare. You got to make a decision that I'm not going to just lay down and take it anymore. But I'm getting up and I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. Come on to the altar today, ministers, and help me. Come on in. Deep. Roll out the red carpet. Somebody's here today. You never walked the red carpet. You need to walk it today. What does the red carpet represent? It represents the blood of Jesus. It represents that Jesus' blood was shed for you. It represents that Jesus died and he rose on the third day for you. It represents that you are royalty. And it don't matter what you've ever done, he loves you. And it don't matter how many times you walk the red carpet. If you need to walk it again, he said he's married to the backslider. Jesus will never give you a divorce. Your husband or wife might divorce you, but Jesus will never divorce you. You can never get a divorce from him. He will always stay married to you. He will always be there for you. He will always be there. And on today, he's saying to you, come today. And if anybody know you're in this room and you're dealing with a spirit of rejection, you need to come. And you need to pray and you need to denounce that spirit. And you need to break generational curses off of your life by denouncing it today. That you are not a loser. You're not a reject. But you're God's very best. His blood was shed on Calvary's cross for you. And if you come today, you come just like you are, the Lord will minister to you. He will minister to you. He will minister to you. Sister Miller, I need you. Sister Miller. Mr. Shannon, you help us at the altar? Yes. He can curse where you at. 